gonna see if this works because there we go check okay looks like the audio is recording now uh, I wanted to I've been having issues with Snagit so I, that's what all these tabs up here for so I'll just close those out I wanted to um, do a video a lesson video a little different than uh, what I normally do which is get behind the camera and you know have a professional background and and uh, just start playing guitar and all that um, as a result of reading an awesome book which I don't own that you should read but I checked out from the library that you should read um, from Austin Cleon called show your work amazing book nice you know very thin size I sat down and read it in about two hours and I've kept it uh, on loan so that I can refer to it time and time again I'd really love to get a copy of one of these but as a result of reading this book show your work he talks about letting your audience go behind the scenes and kind of experiencing what you uh, as an artist and as a producer and creator do behind the scenes so that people can you know feel more involved in what you do and not just see the finished product show them and work them through the process so I figured I'd go ahead and show you how I work on uh, various things, um, various you know processes, and as far as you know how I figure out how to uh, learn a, a lesson video that I plan on doing, or if it's a song or whatever. In this case, this is a request that I got by uh, Kenneth Burris, uh, the guy who was playing with me, um, bluegrass, out on my uh, back porch deck, um, and I've got a lot of views on um, appreciate that by the way people seem to really like that I'd like to get some more jammers you know down here <laughs> and uh, jam with them a little bit more but as a result of his request I figured I'd kind of let you guys see behind the scenes of what exactly it is I do when I go research a, uh, a, a lesson video in this case he requested that uh, I do um, home from the forest by Tony Rice and I'm not sure, but I think this may be a, um, a Gordon Lightfoot tune. I know Tony's really into Gordon Lightfoot. So I figured I'd take you guys along with me uh, for the ride. And what I'll do is usually I'll just type in the song in YouTube. I'll go straight to YouTube for just about everything, as most other people do. So I'll type in Home from the Forest. So it is Gordon Lightfoot, more than likely. Tony Rice. And then I'll hit return, and then we'll see what pulls up. And what I'll do is I'll start studying. Um, I apologize for the video down here, but I'll start studying what's going on. And uh, Chrome has this little thing where it likes to not show everything on a tab. So usually you have to click on another tab, click back on the tab you were on before it'll start scrolling and show what's going on. So uh, a lot of times, you know, I just go ahead and, and watch Tony do it. I'll watch a rendition of him doing it, kind of study it from there. Um, and then I'll look at these other ones, like we have one from Josh Williams here, um, him playing on the bus. We have another guy doing a version of it. Um, we, we, we can listen to Gordon Lightfoot's version of it. You know, just different things here. And I'll just go and, and research these. So, and there, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot but Tony Rice's version of this. So I'll just go to the first one here. I've been playing in 1985. This is a pretty pretty good concert, by the way. So I'll just click on this first one and see what we got here. Okay, so we see, you know, what Tony's doing, and more than likely, I'm, I'll need to do a um, an actual guitar version of this. 
So what I'll do is I'll go back over this a few different times and uh, just watch it over and over again. And I can kind of hear some... The cool thing about a lot of players is their style, once you get familiar with it, you see a lot of the same techniques cropping up in, sim in other songs. So it's, it's not just a completely different song. There's a lot of Tony Rice in this song that is in other songs by Tony Rice. So that's the good thing about certain artists is they'll, they're, they'll typically, once you learn their style, you typically find that they play a lot of the same things in a, a lot of the other songs they do. And this one kind of reminds me of uh, <clears throat> just the, the picking articulation. It reminds me of Church Street Blues. Uh, the last thing on my mind, it has that little cross-picking type of thing. Even though it's more of a medium speed, it has a little bit more of a uh, that cross-picking sound as opposed to just plain strumming. So, first of all, what I'll do is I'll kind of analyze what chords are going on in the song. Because more than likely, I'll need to do a actual uh, picking version of this and maybe play along the, the uh, chords to the song so that everybody out there in YouTube uh, can see exactly how the song works. Okay, so... I'll go back here and I'll start, and the cool thing is, like I've said so many times, um, you can see over here in this little bottom uh, thing here, you can adjust the speed. So I can actually go back and watch this Let me go back out. from a certain point and go ahead and slow it down to about half speed. And it'll sound funny, but it's a lot easier to follow along. Okay, first of all, from his hand position, I can see right here that he's got a capo on here because he's playing right around the third fret. And so we are probably, in, uh, more than likely, we're in the key of D, depending on what shape he's playing with his hand. He's probably playing a C shape in the key of D. So right away, I know where he's at, so I know that there's that much I don't have to worry about. And by, you know, years of watching and playing guitar, I can... I, you can kind of tell what chords they're playing. Even though this is a very low quality video, you can kind of watch and see right in here that um, he just played an F chord, he's in the C, and also by the tonality that's going through the guitar, you can hear. Uh, if you're familiar with playing guitar, you know, after many years of experience, you can hear that it, um, based on the tones of the different strings, uh, that it's a, a C shape because there's an open E string ringing, the high E string. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch my speaker around to face the microphone on the webcam, because then you might be able to hear a little better. So we got an E chord there, so he does a little lick to the E chord. Now, even though the, the shot right here pans out and you can't see any of Tony's hands, the more familiar you are with playing uh, songs in a C shape, the more you know where your notes are, especially based around the uh, C chord. You know, if you're on the second fret with your middle finger, you've got notes on the second fret you can use. A lot of those notes you're hearing are pulling off the D string from the second fret to the open position with the capo there. So, you're having a lot of that, and you're having a lot of the second fret of the G string there with the C position. Yeah, so I can hear that, and a lot of more experienced players out there can hear that. So even though the shot pans out, you can still see, uh, or you can still hear what's going on if you really pay attention. So this is part of analyzing a song. So we've got about 33 seconds total of this intro. Okay, so it sounds funny when you slow it down with somebody singing, but <clears throat> it's an awesome, awesome learning tool. <clears throat> and uh, I know I mention it just about every time now, but I really want to drill it in your head that if I go too fast in this video uh, for you, because my point, my, my goal is after this section happens, then jump directly to me doing the lesson of the video so that you guys can see 
me actually doing the lesson based on what I've just learned here. And this is what I suggest everybody does, is you find a video, you slow it down, <clears throat> you get familiar with the shape that they're playing in, you know, all the different notes that you can use, and then you can actually learn something, analyze a lot better. Don't rely on tabs, don't rely on, you know, rely on what you see and what you hear. That's the most important thing. And try to match it to what you're playing in your guitar. When you can find out where they're playing, for example, he's in the second uh, fret with the capo, so he's in playing in C, so that's the chord of D. So if you want to play it like Tony, play it there. And uh, experiment with all the different things you can do while you're in C and while you're in F, you know, uh, the F shape, I mean. Sorry, you can't see me because this little thing down here in QuickTime, but I can't, I can't make that disappear. But uh, you can experiment with all those different things and realize that, you know, it's not as hard as what it seems. It's just a lot more coordination than it is trying to figure out where the notes are. That's the tough part. And I'll go over that probably in the video right after this little section. So let's go back and listen to it at full speed. And we'll get to uh, kind of see how this goes. Use your ears as well as your eyes because we know that, uh, once again, the camera shots are not always on his fingers. They're, uh, they're a little different. And uh, just to keep, you know, uh, the, the, the music lively and everything. So let's start from the, from the top, uh, normal speed. Yeah. I'm going to turn my Mac up too so we can hear a little better. There's a classic, classic lick at the end of that little tag leg, and we can uh, definitely show how that's done too. But there's something else I didn't notice before, I guess because I was paying attention to all the, the different aspects of learning the song. He actually goes to that, um, I think an, an E minor or an A minor though. So let's go back up and see what's going on here. It doesn't start to about 10 seconds, so instead of 33 seconds, we only have about 23 seconds of a solo. So let's see what this is, and I'll pause it and show you. Right there, uh, you can't t you can't see it by his hand, but you could hear. He goes from a C. Uh, it sounds like he's going from a C to an E minor, then to an A minor. So let's back that up a little bit. Hmm. Let's see. Well, I don't have my. I don't have my acoustic guitar in here. All I've got is my Ibanez, and I don't have a capo for that. So I'll go over it in the lesson later. But uh, more than likely, he's going either to an E minor, or based on his fingering, it may be even a B minor to that A minor, because I can see the first finger here uh, that is down here, on, the, and I can hear it. It's down on the B string, and these two look just like the A minor shape. So he, we're in A minor here. The first chord he goes to, I'm a little more in doubt about. Right, that one. Uh, that one's probably either a, it's either a B minor, but more than likely it's an E minor. So that's another thing uh, we can analyze. We can use the, you know the slow down thing over here to adjust the speed. Okay, so I mean, this is basic Tony Rice. I mean, a lot of this stuff, I can hear this, and I'm like, man, that sounds just like something else. You know, sounds like some other songs that he's he's plays because he is Tony Rice. He's going to play like his style. What I want you to really understand that here is um, a lot of this stuff revolves around the melody. I cannot stress how important melody is when it comes to learning a song. Listen to how the song is sung, as well as how it's played, because more than likely they're using either uh, the verses to create the solo, or they're using the chorus to create the solo, or they're using half, uh, you know, either the first half or the second half, more than likely it'll be the second half. So usually the way songs work is that's how, I, in my experience, that's the way I uh, can find whenever you're playing a song. When you go to do a break, you're either going to follow the chords of the verse, or you're going to follow the chords of the chorus. 
and even in some cases, in more of a, uh, an instance of a turnaround, you're going to follow the last half of either the verse or the chorus. So let's listen to Tony sing some of this and see if we can hear any of that in the melody. Okay, so I'm going to go back, start the whole thing over, and uh, around about 10 seconds or so when it starts. And we're going to listen to him sing, okay? And then we'll see exactly um, how it matches up, if it matches up with a verse or if it matches up with a chorus. Or um, sometimes you can even do a combination of both. Uh, that doesn't happen very often, but sometimes you can do the first half of the verse and the second half of the chorus. It just depends on what the artist wants to do. So we'll see if this matches up with the verse or the chorus or the second half of either, something like that. Let's see exactly where it goes. Okay, so immediately I can tell that it's the same thing as the verse. Same thing. Now, before you forget what the voice sounds like, that melody of him singing, let's go back to the start and you can hear exactly how it sounds and how it matches with his vocals. Not exactly, but uh, for the most part. All except for that last little tag lick matches up to his voice. So we know now that we are in using the verse. So we went through two verses here, and I think it stopped at about 115. I think the mandolin solo is coming up. But this may not even have a chorus. It may just be all the way verses, uh, kind of like a poem. But we'll see where the mandolin goes from here. It's going to be the same thing. They're all, just so they can be on the same page, they're all going to play the same chord progression, which is that of the verse. Let's see what the mandolin's take on it is. If I'm not mistaken, that's what's coming next. Seems like I heard that about to start. I'll back it up just a hair. Okay, so the mandolin's take on it is way different. When you create a song, and I've recently told this to a student, and I learned, well, not really learned, but was confirmed about it through uh, one of Brian Sutton's uh, videos, uh, is that you always establish the melody first. You establish the bass line for the song so that people can become familiar with what it's supposed to sound like. Okay, so when you're starting out a bluegrass song, you want to start out with the melody as basic as possible okay once the melody has been established and it's time for another solo whether it be the guitar again or whether it be some other instrument then they're free to go ahead and just go crazy with it and put their own twist on it put their own style in it you know show off those fancy licks they've been learning like those from you know my bluegrass guitar essentials uh of course but uh so that's the time to put that in once the melody has been established once the groundwork has been laid and the foundation then you can go into that 
and start putting your own spin, your own twist on things. And that's exactly what Jimmy Gaudreau did here in the mandolin. A lot of the mandolin players you hear out there, they're a lot of, you know, hoppy, you know, hoppy sounding, you know, jumping back and forth to all these different notes. Not really following the melody, but following maybe the chord progression, of the scale of the chord progression. So hitting maybe some of the main notes of the chords that they're following. So uh, that's really important. Start with a basic melody, a foundation, especially when you're learning something new. Start with the easiest variation you can of it, and then start working on adding extra notes, putting your own different twists on there, using some licks from other songs that you've learned, inserting them here, see if they'll work, especially licks in the key of, uh, or in the C shape. You know, all this kind of stuff, definitely, uh, I go over a lot of this stuff in my Bluegrass Guitar Essentials course, so you definitely need to check that out if you haven't uh, by clicking on the Show More area below for links to that. So let's resume here and see what's going on. We have Tony continues to play, uh, and he actually starts singing again, and then we're going to hear probably another break, and we can kind of see how this goes all the rest of the way through. And then she staircased the old man made his way. His raggy pulled around him as upon his cot he lay. And he wondered how it happened that he ended up this way. Getting lost like a fool. In the forest. And as he lay there sleeping, the vision did appear. Upon his bed shining the face of one so dear Who loved him in the springtime of the long forgotten year When the wildflowers did bloom In the forest Well she touched his grizzled fingers and she called him by his name And then he heard the joyful sound of children at their games in an old house on a hillside in some forgotten town Where the river runs down From the forest Okay, so <laughs> that's a lot of Tony Rice right there. Um, and I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to be going over that that section because I've went over a lot of other Tony Rice stuff that's very similar to that, especially if you look on my videos on, uh, if you'll type in my search, the search engine on my uh, channel, Originally Untitled. A lot of the stuff you just saw is going to be, you're going to find out in that video series. There's like four of them okay so i went really into detail on tony rice stuff there um and i will not go into that much detail in this part i'm really focusing more on the intro of this song to start it off and just like i said you're going to use what you know anyway you're going to use your own licks you're going to use uh different things that you've learned in other songs and put your own stamp on this on this song okay if you're wanting to learn it now once again we find here so far the song structure has been we've got an intro then we have two verses from Tony, and then we've got uh, a solo by the mandolin, Jimmy Gaudreau. Then we've got Tony coming back in for three verses, okay? And now Tony has just finished his, uh, you know, flurry of notes solo, his own little spin on things, okay? So we've had a melody established. Here's what the song sounds like. In other words, here's what the conversation you're having with your audience. The preface is, here's what the song is supposed to sound like, Okay? And if he just went on a flurry of notes like that, like he just did now, you wouldn't know what song they were doing because you could do that on any song. There's nothing that defines that characteristic of that song, okay? So that's what I'm saying. So we have, we have the melody is established. Here's, here, audience, here's what it's supposed to sound like. Then we have my vocals that are matching what I just did. And then now that you've got the melody established, we can go on, on just a wild rant and start playing all this other fancy stuff that we know you enjoy, audience. Okay? So they're having a conversation with the audience, and this is kind of what's going on. The mandolin plays his part. Here comes Tony back for three verses, kind of held you, hold you in suspense. 
Well, we want to see more guitar, we want to see more guitar, and all of a sudden he gives it to you, buddy. He just blazes through it. And before I forget, I want to say a big thank you to Michael Smith here, I noticed, who is hosting this video. Okay, this is not, in, in, for all intents and purposes, this is not to have any copyright or any infringement or anything like that. This is for fair use of instructional purposes under the fair use uh, portion of copyright law. So that's what this portion is for. So I just wanted to let you know about how, how, how this is working. Now let's go ahead and go back to that little solo section and continue on through the end of the video and kind of see, and wrap this thing up. Um, and this, so far this video has been 25 minutes. And so I, I'm not sure if I'll combine it with the actual lesson or not. I may do that, may splice it together, I'm not sure. This, this right here is a good enough video in itself on how to learn a song. And so I'll see what I end up doing with that and I'll decide on that. And uh, what I may do is just release this video the first week and then the next week you get the lesson to complement it. I may just do that, it might be easier that way. All right, so let's continue on. I think we started about two minutes and 30 seconds where the solo started maybe, maybe a little after that. And then we'll, can, we'll wrap this thing up. For it, well, she touched his bristle on a hillside and saw where the river runs down. From that that two fifty seven, yeah. Okay, I want you to notice that little tag at the very end. For the old man has come home from the forest. And then immediately right after that, he matches that. He matches that melody with a little fancy lick to, to tag it all out. Let's listen to that part again. For the old man has come home from the forest. Now I can tell you right now, a ton of those licks, just about everything I heard in there from those solos, you can find on my originally untitled lesson series. Uh, very extensive and very expansive, and there's no use in rehashing what I've already went over. But the only thing I didn't recognize, and uh, you can, like I said, it, it shows you kind of what's going on. You can slow it down here, uh, but it's in his solo here. Let me go back here and I'll show you what I didn't really recognize. That little long run right there. Okay, so let's back it up, slow it down, that has speed, and play it again. Okay, just that much. You can stop and analyze that section and see what he's going on over on yourself. See, there's really no need for tabs anymore, people, because we have YouTube with variable speed playback. The only reason you probably need tabs is when the camera shot, you know, kind of goes away from the person's hands, or if there's just a fast flurry of notes and you really can't figure out what's going on. That they still help. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, YouTube has made it very easy to be able to slow this stuff down and figure out how to get it done. And it's more important for you to be able to learn on your own instead of relying on somebody else's opinion, unless they actually created the song and they're going back and writing all the tabs out themselves. Chances are, 99% of the time, you're going to have an inaccurate version of the song anyway. So it's best to, to watch the video, analyze it, see how the, the song is coming about. Now, we haven't even covered the lyrics. Uh, I haven't even really sat down and listened to what the song's about. Um, I mean, I could go off of my spiel and all this, but I have to, I'd have to go back and really listen to it. But that's a whole other thing. In songwriting and playing songs, the lyrics speak their own story as well as the music speaks its own story as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is basically, you know, 
basically a lot of the same stuff that I've seen Tony do and I've hear, heard Tony do and just about on every song he just has a, a, a grab bag of licks and he pulls them out whenever he needs them and that's the good thing about learning licks is any uh, just about any lick he plays in here especially the tag licks and the things that happens at the ends of each phrase he can just copy and paste those into another uh, song entirely and he has and I do it too just about every player does it you have licks that you fall back on that you're well known for that you play so often that you yourself think man I gotta come up with something else but you never really sit down to do that because it what hey, what you have just works and in your mind you think if it ain't broke don't fix it sometimes though you gotta break it sometimes you gotta get you know try to learn something new because you'll stay in that rut forever if you don't always be learning you know so I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed uh, Home from the Forest. If you haven't never heard of it, now you know kind of what it's about and what it's like. And uh, right here is the URL to watch that. And I'll probably leave a link below anyway on how on you know on this video uh, of this actual video I've went over, so you can do some of the same things that I've done and learn for yourself. So I think what I will do is release this in two parts. So uh, what I'll probably do is go ahead and schedule this video for to release whenever it releases and then the very next video either it may even be this week it may be next week uh, schedule it to release immediately sometime after this one so that you can kind of get both of them together so thanks so much for watching please check out bluegrassguitaressentials.com for many more many more um, variations on scales and licks and things like that I'm continuously improving that course almost got it done can't wait to get it done and get it ready for you guys so definitely check that out uh, www.bluegrassguitarcentrals.com uh, go to the webisodes portion so you can take advantage of the course that's available right now uh, once it once I get all of it together it will become a full package the webisodes will still be there but it will be more economical to purchase the full package and then from there I'll take probably just a little short break because this has been taking a long time to do and then get right to work on the DVD versions of this course. So thanks so much for watching. Please check out uh, those resources. And I hope you have a blessed and wonderful day. And I'm going to get off here and hope you've really learned something from this video. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what your feelings are. Let me know how you analyze songs. What do you do? You know, what's your techniques? I appreciate it. And uh, I was about to hit record here. I need to hit stop on the other player, though. It's over here on that different monitor. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless.